Hi, it's Faceless Tech. I was just about to do a USB-C mod on a Game Boy Macro XL and thought I'd just make a quick uh, video of the process uh, since I've done a few. And uh, I'm quite happy with this final board, which lets you just pop in and um, take out the uh, existing charge port and you can literally drop this in, add USB-C charge into your Game Boy Macro. Um, I partially assembled this one. I put the uh, USB-C, I'm using these, uh, I found these amazing uh, USB-C um, female ports, but they've got six uh, pins on them, which is basically the power and ground. Uh, four of them are power and ground for the uh, reversible cable, and then two of them are for the resistor to let you know that it is actually an incoming device uh, to take power. I've kind of, um, I didn't have enough room on the board really to add two resistors. I've gone the route of the Raspberry Pi um, 4, and you know how um, that went. It was only some cables, um, electrically marked cables that wouldn't work, you know, so, uh, you know, I don't think you'll come across many of them cables in the wild. All the cables I've tested, like the Switch, um, just other random ones I've got, have all worked fine, so I'm quite happy with it. Maybe in the future if I do get problems with it, I might add another resistor somewhere, but God knows where, because the board is small enough as it is. So right, I'll get into um, how to, so once you've assembled it, you basically uh, use like a tiny little sword and lion tip just to do the little pins on the six pins and then I'm just going to pop on the resistor which is a tiny I think it's 603 it is super small which is there uh, you can see it I'm not making this up this actually is the resistor and then all I normally do is to, um, got these resistors glue on the end of these. Right, so what I normally do is pre-tin and then just heat one end, stick it down, wait a couple of seconds, you can only wait till it solidifies over the top and then just hit the other side and there you go. It's as simple as that and we'll test it out with a um, multimeter. It was more test it as long, you know, I've got uh, this USB-C cable that's from a just a wall wall power bank and we're just gonna test that. Are we getting power? Oh no, we have if I turn the multimeter to the right setting. Yep, five volts and then I also flip it over, test the other side. And we're also getting five volts. So that we know that all the pins are soldered correctly. And then we can go ahead. I'll just, um, what I normally do with these as well, I'll pre-anchor down the front of the um, port, flip it over, do the other pins, and then I'll come back round once I know it's all done and dusted. Just a little bit solder to the back. You want these to be nice and flat as well because obviously this is going to go sitting straight on the board. Oh god. Doesn't matter if you get any solder in these other holes because we're going to fill them with solder anyway. But everyone's going to have a good critique of my soldering skills but you know. Ah god. That is hot. And once that's down, got it flat enough. So that is basically ready to go into it. Pop it onto one side there. And now this is the way that I found the easy enough way to remove the port because, and also you won't rip any pads doing this. Here's one that I have removed earlier. This is off another board. What I'm going to basically do is heat up the two anchor pins one at a time, slowly lever it out, and then you basically just rock it back and forth and then snap the other pins off. So it's not really like you'd be able to salvage this to use on another DS, but we are obviously pre uh, we'll put some nice leaded solder on these joints just to help it flow. And then what I normally do is heat it up, 
give it a few seconds, then hit do this the other side. And just keep doing that. Can hit the board. Um is obviously not too happy about this, but Try to get it hot enough just to and then you want to wait a few seconds till the solder re solidifies otherwise it'll just go straight back up through the hole it won't take long really it's normally like the last little tiny little bit that you've got to that it becomes a pain with As you can see there, we have done it. See, it didn't take long. It didn't take long at all. And you go, oh my god, why am I burning myself? Why am I surprised that it's hot? Sorry, there you go. <laughs> As you can see, it has solid. It has come loose. And all that's left now is the back pins. But obviously, you could. Um, we're just going to go and rock this back and forth. And there you go. The pins have snapped off. And then you're just left. Well, I think the actual pins come off the solder joints, which is weird. But normally what we do is they normally just snap off. We just don't want to put that much pressure on it, really. You just want to just do it enough, and then they will just snap. Because there is quite a lot. Because don't forget, this port um, isn't just a charge port. Because each revision of the Nintendo hardware kind of brings a little bit of the other with it. This actually has the audio, so if you use an audio, um, if you use the same ca the cable, this one, that you used on your Game Boy Advance SP, you can actually get audio out through your port and also through your headphone jacks. You can have dual audio out for um, whatever reason you'd want to. I know. I'm not going to judge it, but you know, there might be a reason. Um, so, yeah, so because I think if you look. Um, on the, the the DS Lite, obviously they changed the charge port entirely, but obviously they took that out. But you can see there is uh, more than two pins there, There's six pins in fact. So that's for the audio part, which is a bit weird, but you know. Now what we're going to do next is we need to line up. We want to pre-tin. We've got a few holes on the back here, as you can see. This. Um, These, this one here, this one on the other side, and then you got this ones, which are the um, positive and negative. Uh, but these ones are basically just anchor ports to go through the old anchor joints, just to give it a lot. So basically, you're anchoring it at four different points, so it should it shouldn't move anywhere. Then it should be quiet. So what we do is just freshen these pads up, make sure they're nice and full with solder, so we can attach them down. And obviously, just go over these again, just make sure they're nice. Not too much solder, just a little bit. It's a little bit of fresh solder on them. But this is where you're kind of a bit tricky where you need to line up. You want to, we're using, I kind of always forget which ones we're using here. But if you line it up, you've got the furthest left pin, that's your negative, and then um, the other one is the second from the right. So you've got this one, which is your negative pin, and then you've got this one, which is your positive. Do it works out quite well, really, and you want to line them up with on the board here. You want to slide it over, solder it down, solder them on. Then, then you got to solder the other, the two up here, the two anchor points. So we'll have a go at doing that. See, so we do get them lined up beforehand. Let's move this into the to the middle of the shot. So you want to, you want to. Also, a little pre tin as well. Just so you're not waiting ages to, to fill them up. Fill these up. Yep, so that's it. Get it in place, line them up. Luckily, they are quite far away from each other, so they're well, not away from other components. 
and then you just want to hold the iron on it let it solidify, you got a little bit of a hold on there let's do the other one just hold it down it's pretty, it's pretty solid but obviously we're going to go, you know, if you're going to do it, you might as well overdo it and then you want to just add some extra solder down through here. You can kind of see it next to it. You can see when that starts to solidify. I've seen that word a lot on it, solidify. There you go. But there, it doesn't matter if you get solder on um, the shielding of this and for that because that, that's ground, that's ground, it's all ground, it's all shielding, it's all great. It's all gravy, as they say. So let's do the other side, let's try and get this in. I'm just going to fill it up with solder. It's not going to go anywhere after this. Trust me. That's it. Now we have a look. Okay, that's pretty good. Gonna remove any excess um, solder from. Doesn't really matter. I don't think it goes in around the case. Right, um, let's try it with a rechargeable battery in it. Let's put a battery in. Oh, crap. You can tell I've not really planned this because it's just a bit of a let's have a look battery in and there we go we've got power swizzle it around the other way just to make sure and we've got so we've basically successfully added usb-c there is like a big void in um in the case obviously because that that port is a hell of a lot smaller than that one it's normally when i do the switch screen mod i'll put i'll add my uh switch up in there that's kind of how this mod actually came about in fact um, but yeah, as usual, there'll be a little blog post with uh, the board files, um, but the bits you need to get. But it's it's pretty much uh, straightforward. I'm quite happy with it. I might actually look into doing this on other consoles as well, other handouts, because you know you don't want to carry around proprietary cables for everything. You don't want to be like, hey, has anyone got a charger for a DS Fat? And everyone's like, no. What the hell is one of them? So you just get your USB-C charger out, unless you're around those Apple fanboys and they don't know what a C charger is. Anyway. Right, anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.